Hello, St. Michael families. We're taking up the second lesson for the month of March. Uh, the target dates for this are March 20th uh, through March 25th, 2022. And this segment is on God's mercy. It says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21, The angel announced to Joseph, You shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Another scriptural passage that guides us in our understanding comes from the first chapter of John, or first letter of John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. So whenever we gaze upon the cross of Jesus Christ, we should always say thank you for your great act of love on the cross that wiped away our sins. Mercy is an act of love, an act of kindness, and an act of compassion. We show mercy when we do something kind for someone in need, but this is basic generosity. We are most merciful when we choose not to punish someone for doing something wrong, even if they deserve it. As human beings, we choose when to be merciful. Mercy from each other, sadly, is never guaranteed because of our weakness as human beings. But our God is so wonderful that he promises us his mercy. All we have to do is ask. There is no God like our God. This lesson discusses the many ways that God is merciful to us. God the Father created us, but Jesus dwelled among us as one of us and understands our weakness. And all, all about him, he is the just judge, but he is always ready to forgive our sins and make us clean. So let's go back to the beginning. What is sin? Sin is something that we do or say or desire which offends the truth of God's eternal law. A venial sin is one that damages, but doesn't break our relationship with God. It harms the relationship, but does not break it. A mortal sin, on the other hand, is one that breaks our relationship with God. And we have to remember that we're the one doing the breaking. God never breaks his relationship with us. It's us that do the breaking. It's important to know that it's, us doing it. For a sin to be mortal, it has to be of grave nature. So serious stuff like breaking a commandment. We have to know that it's wrong and we have to intentionally choose to commit the sin anyway. It's important to know that we can never commit a sin by accident. It always takes a conscious choice. The sacrament of reconciliation is God's gift to us to help us correct or to help us restore the relationship with him, where we apologize to, get to God, where we give him our most sincere apology and promise to do better. And God always overwhelms us with his mercy. One of the things that I teach in baptism class that I think is important for all the parents here is that our kids' image of God is largely formed by their image of us as parents. When our children are very, very small, you know, we have the power to make day by turning a light on or make night by turning a light off or pulling down the shades. And we decide when and what and if, you know, our kids eat. We are all powerful to them and our kids look at us as being all powerful. So how we conduct ourselves, how we relate to our kids, particularly at those times that they may have done something wrong, often has a significant bearing on how our kids will see God. So parents, keep that in mind as we relate and teach and correct and love our children. The lesson continues with two activities. The first is a fun game called Mercy Bingo, and the second is Trail of Mercy. I encourage you to do both activities with your kids. And now for the older saints. God's mercy is always available. All we have to do is ask. But what if we don't ask? What if we push God away? That's, that's when some real trouble can come in. This section covers what happens when that habit 
leads to hardness of heart where we stop asking God for his forgiveness. When this becomes a habit, we fall away from the sacraments. We begin to think that we can live without God and without his abundant mercy. Parents, it's critically important that at a young age, we instill a sense of God's mercy within our kids and help them to understand what a wonderful feeling it is when we receive God's forgiveness, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation that is always available to us. Just like everything else in life, good habits beget good habits. Make it a routine in your family to go to reconciliation together. Just as there is joy to be had in receiving God's mercy and remaining close to him, there are serious dangers of living a life apart. When our hearts get hardened and we stay away from God's sanctifying grace and mercy, we risk dying in a state of sin. We talked about heaven, hell, and purgatory in the fall and in, back in another lesson. And it's important for our kids to know that hell is not something that is assigned to us. We choose it. Hell is the logical result of living a life apart, of rejecting God's grace and God's mercy. If we live a life of, apart from God in our earthly life, then we will live a life apart from God in the eternal life. On the other hand, if we live a life attendant to God's love and receive his mercy when we need it through the sacrament of reconciliation, and if we pay attention to the prayer uh, the act of contrition, and we promise to amend our lives and to make those improvements uh, to our lives, then that is a life of faith and fidelity. It's a life of love, and it puts, puts us on a path to dwell with him for all time. Thank you, and God bless.